Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be the Shadowlands preview for the Enhancement Shaman. This spec might be probably one of the most changed specs going from BFA into Shadowlands, so I'm excited to talk about it. I'll cover everything from class changes, talent changes, legendaries, covenants, conduits, and how it actually plays. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first and potentially biggest change is the removal of Maelstrom. Maelstrom was the resource that Enhancement Shaman used for the past two expansions, if I remember correctly, but it had a lot of issues when it came to the Enhancement playstyle. And instead of trying to fix it, they just completely removed it from the game and replaced it with a new resource that is kind of reminiscent of an old one called Maelstrom Weapon Stacks. These stacks will go up to a maximum of 10, each stack reducing the cast time of your Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, and your two healing spells by 20% per stack and also increasing their damage per stack. You can consume up to 5 stacks, so if you're capped at 10 stacks, you can, for example, cast 2 back-to-back -back Chain Lightnings, but typically uh, with the Enhancement playstyle, that won't happen. Um, so instead of relying on a standard resource, we now rely on these stacks. A lot of spells have also been added back to the baseline toolkit, some of the most important ones being Flame Shock and Frost Shock that will see a lot of filler use in our rotation. They also added back some utility uh, spells such as Healing Stream Totem, Wind Fury Totem, which makes it so people in your party have a 20% chance to proc an extra auto attack. Uh, they also added back Chain Heal. And then Flame Tongue Weapon and Wind Fury Weapon are back to being just a one hour enhancement that you put on your weapons. I think these could be passive because most importantly um, in Shadowlands they introduced a consumable called Shadow Core Oil that kind of augments the potion that you use. And if you use the default weapon enchants that Shaman has, then you can't use Shadow Core Oil. So I really wish that they made these passive instead of like actually being on your weapon, but that's like a pretty minor problem. Then Lightning Shield is now also baseline instead of a talent. And of course, instead of generating Maelstrom, it, it generates uh, Maelstrom weapon stacks. And Feral Spirits has also been changed a little bit. Like I said, everything that had to do with Maelstrom in the past, now uh, they basically converted to Maelstrom stacks. So Feral Spirits will now generate a single stack when you activate them, and then another stack every 3 seconds over the course of their duration. Um, and then for removed spells, Flame Tongue and Frostbrand have been removed. Both of those acted very similar to like Flame Shock and Frost Shock, so it makes sense that they replaced them. And also Rockbiter, which was kind of our core filler. Um, has been removed, but I think the new playstyle is smooth enough where you don't really need like a meaningless filler in your toolkit. Next, let's look at the talents because this is pretty much where we got the major overhaul. Even at first glance, you will probably not recognize a lot of these talents, and even if you think you recognize them, they've probably been changed. So the first row is pretty much completely new. Uh, Boulder Fist was removed and replaced with Lashing Flames. Lava Lash now increases the damage of your Flame Shock on its target by 100% for 12 seconds. So this just makes keeping up your Flame Shock on your priority target a little bit more important. Then Hot Hand was swapped down to the second row um, and replaced with Forceful Winds. And then since Lightning Shield has been removed, we got a new ability called Elemental Blast. It has a 12 second cooldown, 1.9 second cast that is affected by Maelstrom stacks. And it reads, harness the raw power of the elements, dealing elemental damage and increasing your critical strike or haste by 3% or mastery by 6% for 10 seconds. So on paper, it seems pretty cool. Unfortunately, it is a little bit difficult to fit into the rotation. I haven't really been able to make it work too well, but I'm sure some builds will pop up in the future that make pretty good use of this ability. Um, then in the second row, again, everything's changed. Landslide is gone and is replaced by Storm Flurry. Uh, Storm Strike has a 25% chance to strike the target, an additional time for 40% of the normal damage. This effect can chain off of itself. So Storm Strike is a pretty significant uh, source of our damage on single target, and especially with one of the legendaries that it has pretty good interaction with uh, that I will cover later. This just makes Storm Strike even that much stronger. 
And then, like I mentioned, Hot Hand got moved down from the first row to the second row. And then we also get Ice Strike. Uh, strike your target with an Icy Blade, dealing Frost damage and snaring them by 50% for 6 seconds. Successful Ice Strikes reset the cooldown of your Flame Shock and Frost Shock spells. So this, I think, might see some use in PvP. I'm not sure how strong it's going to be in PvE. Again, with the current toolkit, it's kind of hard to fit extra abilities in your rotation. So we'll have to see how this actually works out. Then in the level 35 row, again completely reworked, uh, we get a new talent called Elemental Assault. Stormstrike damage is increased by 15% and Stormstrike now generates one stack of Maelstrom weapon. On single target, this is going to be extremely powerful. Uh, like I said, a lot of our damage does revolve around Stormstrike. Um, and it just makes it a much better builder and also a better damage source. Then Hailstorm has been reworked. Um, now it causes each stack of your Maelstrom weapon consumed to increase the damage of your next Frost Shock by 35% and causes your next Frost Shock to hit one additional target per Maelstrom weapon stacks consumed. This introduces a pretty interesting playstyle for AoE where you kind of want to rotate between your three primary AoE spenders. Uh, which is Crash Lightning, Chain Lightning, and Frost Shock. So Chain Lightning, if you hit more than one target, it causes your next Crash Lightning to deal more damage. So you want to kind of start off the whole cycle by activating Crash Lightning. Um, and then from there, you want to Chain Lightning, Frost Shock, use a filler, then again, go back and repeat the cycle through Crash Lightning, Chain Lightning, Frost Shock, Filler. So overall, it's pretty interesting, and I think it makes AoE a lot more interactive than it was in the past. Then, Fire Nova has made a return, unfortunately not as strong as it was in the past, but it's a 14 second cooldown affected by haste. Erupt, a burst of fiery damage from all targets affected by your Flame Shock, dealing fire damage to up to 6 targets within 8 yards of your Flame Shock targets. So this makes it so you just want to put Flame Shock on as many targets as you can, and then use Fire Nova to cause them all to erupt. Unfortunately, currently it seems that this is way more trouble than it's worth. Um, Hailstorm just introduces a much smoother and intuitive playstyle on AoE that also has a pretty large payoff every time you Frost Shock. Fire Nova is a lot more finicky, uh, takes a lot more micromanaging to use. So currently, I don't see it being too strong, but maybe they change it, maybe some people discover some cool interactions, but we'll see how this is actually going to work out. In the last two rows, we didn't really get as many changes. In the level 45 row, uh, Fury of Air is now gone and replaced by Stormkeeper. It's a one minute cooldown and it causes your next two lightning bolts or chain lightnings to be instant cast and deal 150% more damage. So other than that, this row is the same as it was before. Then the level 50 row, Elemental Spirits and Earthen Spike have not been changed. Ascendance was slightly buffed to now deal a burst of damage at the moment that you press it. Uh, but other than that, it still functions the same way as it did before. Alright, next let's take a look at the legendaries because each one of these kind of changes the talents that you'd pick um, and the abilities that actually deal most of your damage. So first up we have Legacy of the Frost Witch. Consuming 5 stacks of Maelstrom Weapon will reset the cooldown of Stormstrike and cause your next Stormstrike to deal 100% increased damage. So if you play this legendary, you will definitely want to play Storm Flurry for example. Um, this is because most of your gameplay will revolve around just getting as many storm strikes as possible. So pretty much you will use your maelstrom weapon stacks to reset the cooldown of your storm strike. So you will always want to like storm strike and then right after it uh, use it either on a lightning bolt or a chain lightning and then they will reset the cooldown of your storm strike so you can press it again. This leads to pretty smooth gameplay that revolves mainly around just storm striking as much as possible. Um, it's fairly easy to play as well, so it's not super difficult even for me, uh, who's not very familiar with it, with Enhancement Shaman. So overall, I like this legendary quite a lot. Then we have Witch Doctor's Wolf Bones increase the chance to gain stacks of Maelstrom Weapon by five percent, 
And whenever you gain a stack of Maelstrom weapon, the cooldown of Feral Spirits is reduced by 2 seconds. So this just enhances your basic playstyle. It's not going to change the order that you press, press abilities in, rather it's just going to make it so you generate a lot more Maelstrom weapon stacks and also you have a lower cooldown on your Feral Spirits. So overall this is not super impactful, but it does provide a nice little improvement to our basic uh, playstyle. Then we have Primal Lava Actuators. Each time Flame Shock deals periodic damage, increase the damage of your next Lava Lash by 10% and reduce the cooldown of Lava Lash by 0.5 seconds. So this one has really good interaction with like Hot Hand um, and makes your single target rotation revolve mainly around Lava Lash hits instead of Storm Strike hits. So as you can see, depending on which legendary you pick, it kind of also determines which talents you pick up and which ability you will focus your rotation on. All right, next let's talk about the Covenant abilities. And first up, we have the Kyrian Vesper Totem. It's a one minute cooldown, summon a totem at the target location for 30 seconds. Your next three damaging spells or abilities will cause the totem to radiate arcane damage to up to six enemies near the totem and your next three healing spells will heal up to six allies near the totem um, for X amount of health. Casting this ability again while the totem is active will relocate the totem. So this one is by far the most intuitive and probably the best utility as well. Um, it makes your AoE burst a little bit better. It's also fairly decent on single target and it provides and plays into the more support role that Enhancement has been moving towards into in Shadowlands, especially with things like Chain Lightning being brought back, Healing Stream Totem, you can actually have a pretty big impact on a Mythic Plus group's health, for example, if you drop like your Vesper Totem, your Healing Stream Totem, and then you cast like an instant Chain Lightning, um, or Chain Heal rather, you will deal quite a lot of burst healing to your group. So overall, pretty interesting. And it also allows you to move it around after it's been placed. So that just makes it that much more useful. Then for Ventir, we have Chain Harvest. It is a one and a half minute cooldown, two and a half second cast that is affected by Maelstrom weapon stacks, uh, if I remember correctly. Send a wave of Anima at the target, uh, which then jumps to an additional nearby targets, dealing shadow damage to up to five enemies and restoring health. Um, to up to five allies. For each target critically struck, the cooldown of Chain Harvest is reduced by five seconds. So this is just essentially like an empowered Chain Lightning. Um, overall, I think it could be good on AoE. Um, currently, not exactly sure how powerful it is. It does remove some of the benefit of Vesper Totem where you can kind of decide when you want damage versus when you want healing. This kind of does everything in a single button. So it's a lot simpler to use, but again, it does remove that choice. Then for Necrolord, we have Primordial Wave. Uh, blast your target with a Primordial Wave dealing shadow damage and applying Flame Shock to an enemy or healing an ally. Your next Lightning Bolt will also hit all targets affected by your Flame Shock. And it is on a 45 second cooldown. So this ability seems like it was kind of designed around Fire Nova, where you want to have Flame Shock up on as many targets as possible. Um, and then you can Primordial Wave and use your uh, Fire Nova. So then all of the targets with Flame Shock will take a burst of damage. And then for Night Fate, we have Fate Transfusion, which is on a two minute cooldown. Transfer the life force of up to four enemies in the targeted area, dealing nature damage to each enemy over 2.8 seconds. Uh, pressing Fate Transfusion again within 20 seconds will release 15% of all the damage from Fate Transfusion, healing up to eight allies near yourself. So as you can see, most of the Covenants have both an offense and like a defense uh, component from damage and healing. This one is probably my least favorite just because it you need to stand still for three seconds uh, to channel this ability. And enhancement rotation is already so smooth in most situations that you don't just have three seconds to stand around where you're waiting on abilities to come back. You pretty much always have something to press. Also, 
channeling any ability and not being able to move as a melee DPS is always a bad, bad bet. Uh, if you remember back in the second tier of BFA, we had a trinket, Grongs, that works similarly to this, even though it's a lot shorter duration, you didn't stand still for three seconds, it still got some melee DPS killed. So taking this ability, I feel like it's just way too risky. You should be able to at least move while you cast it um, and keep attacking. So they should either change it to be like a buff on yourself that like radiates damage or something along those lines. Next, we have the conduits. And first up, we have chill to the core. Frost Shock has a chance to grant two stacks of Maelstrom weapon and the chance increases with conduit rank. So this makes your AOE a lot smoother when you play with Hailstorm because without it, sometimes you run into the situation that you can actually Frost Shock twice before you get another instant cast Chain Lightning. So this just makes it so you're more likely to be able to stay in that cycle of after every single Chain Lightning, you're able to get a Frost Shock off. Then we have Focus Lightning. Maelstrom Weapon increases the damage or healing of your next spell by an additional 4% per stack. Again, this just makes it um, so your base resource just empowers your abilities even more. So overall, it's a little boring, but it fits well with the theme. Then we have Magma Fists. Uh, Lava Lash has an additional 25% critical strike chance against enemies affected by your Flame Shock. Um, especially when paired with Lashing Flames, it just makes it even more important to always have Flame Shock on the target that you're going to be Lava Lashing. Uh, because you just get so many more benefits from it. And then lastly, we have Unruly Winds. Wind Fury Weapon has a 40% chance to trigger a third attack. So Wind Fury Weapon is one of our weapon enchants that I mentioned at the beginning. So overall, again, kind of boring, but it just fits into that idea that uh, Enhancement Shaman can kind of proc things off of themselves. And sometimes you run into streaks of good luck where you will proc a bunch of extra stuff. Um, so overall, the conduits, um, three of them are a little bit boring. I really like the Frost Shock one, although on single target, it's a little bit less impactful. On AoE, it's going to be quite strong. All right, next, let's talk about how Enhancement Shaman actually plays. The last time I played Enhancement Shaman was in testing for BFA. Enhancement Shaman felt... A little bit clunky to play. Um, I didn't like the way it built resources and spent resources. It was a little bit overwhelming, but trying it out in Shadowlands beta has been a ton of fun. Um, in Mythic Plus, the AOE rotation is very smooth, especially with the Frost Witch Legendary, um, making your AoE feel very rewarding when you play with Hailstorm. So that's been a lot of fun to try out. It also does a pretty decent amount of damage. In the footage that I'm showing in this video, I didn't have my Soulbind or my Conduits because there was a bug with the Kyrian questline. But even without those, it felt pretty powerful to play in Mythic Plus. In single target, since I did go more of an AoE oriented build, it was a little bit behind some other specs, but I think that mostly has to do with the build I was playing rather than the class itself. It still felt extremely smooth to play on single target and packing a lot of your damage into those storm strikes was pretty satisfying and trying to work around those resets as much as possible. I really like the way the new resource works um, and the class and the talent tree in particular did seem to get a lot of very nice changes. There are a few things that I still wish they took a look at. Particularly the last tier in the talent row still feels a little bit weird um, and provides very little interaction. So the Elemental Spirits is still just a little bit RNG for my taste. Earthen Spike is just boring and now that our rotation is so smooth, it's a little bit more difficult to fit it in every 20 seconds. And then Ascendance, I just flat out don't really like um, on Enhancement Shaman. If they rework the sentence a little bit, it could be cool. But Enhancement currently really lacks that high burst damage that I think we should have um, with all our cooldowns up. So I'm not sure if they're going to take another look at the last talent here, but I really wish that they do. And then the other big negative of Enhancement Shaman is, of course, its survivability. 
Both in Mythic Plus and in Raiding, this has been an issue on Enhancement and it has not been addressed at all moving into Shadowlands. Our defensive cooldown is still among the weakest um, out of all the other melee classes. Also, our defensive slash utility talent here in the level 30 row is still decent for utilities uh, from bringing static charge, but Spirit Wolf is an absolutely atrocious talent. Um, I, I do not like it at all. Sitting in Spirit Wolf just to gain DR is so counterintuitive and such a bad gameplay. Um, I wish that they made this work a little bit differently. Um, preferably just replace it with an actually good defensive or a defensive button that actually increases the defensive value that we get from existing spells. So the Shaman survivability needs to be looked at if they're going to be a contender for a top end mythic raid spot. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about these new talents? Because it seems like most of our talent tree has been essentially completely overhauled. Uh, I'm really curious to see what you guys think about it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.